we are live now good evening all the members i ye arun chajed on behalf of the class and on behalf of the educating main apne sabhi member ka hardik swagat karta hu today we have ca narsimhan elangovan ji from bangalore if you is a grc professional keynote speaker and partner of aen and company bangalore his area of practice include data analytics risk based audit privacy impact assessment internal audit information system assurance internal financial control sox compliance soc audit etc he is a faculty for the bisa cisa and courses on the blockchain technology he has authored more than four books for ic ai ksca etc on the technology sir is the regular speaker of the technology at various national as well as international conferences of ic ai i sca cii fiki etc sir was spoken at international conference in dubai malaysia bangkok Saudi Arabia, Genoa, Singapore, Nigeria, etc. And most important, sir, has been identified as one of the top ten influential consulting leader 2020 and annual recognition for the torch bearer in the consulting sphere by CEO Insight Magazines. It's very glad to know, sir. In the past few year, uh, sir has also been advising in the emerging area of the technology such as artificial intelligence. blockchain cloud computing cyber security and the big data he has regularly spoken on these domain in the national as well as international forum so now i am requesting ca sumit garji uh, to take up the session further uh, thank you arun ji for your wonderful start and uh, one of the best and dynamic speaker of today's webinar ci narsimham ji uh, sir welcome to you on this forum thank you and uh, today's topic is as decided artificial intelligence that we can say uh, it is a future of the profession and future of the world rather uh, we can elaborate this thing like uh, we are learning new abcd dynamics like a for artificial intelligence b for blockchain c for cyber security and d for data analytics so we should learn these things because on the basis of technology we can uh, efficiently work in our activities in our professionalism and there is various challenges has been uh, come over the year but uh, we are facing and uh, overcome all the challenges and uh, coming forward with the technological advancement so uh welcome to each one of you for learning today's topic artificial intelligence and uh, one of the best speaker we have with us so welcome to you once again sir and now i request sir to take up the technical session to move ahead thank you sir perfect let me know once you are able to see the screen it may take a minute sure is my screen visible yes sir perfect thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity a uh, very good evening to all of you uh, if you're joining in live uh, good morning good afternoon and late evening to whichever part of the world you are in uh, ladies and gentlemen as introduced rightly ai is going to be one significant game changer in the world today and the reason why i say that is the power of what it can do if you look into google ceo statement he makes a mention the impact and power of ai can be much more than the impact of fire 
impact of invention of electricity. Perhaps after fire and electricity, the largest invention of mankind is the ability of the system to think like a human being. And that is what, my dear friends, artificial intelligence is. A very warm greetings to all of you. Thank you for inviting me once again. And this session, we are going to discuss or rather predominantly focus on what exactly is this AI? And why is it making so much noise? And what is the benefit or advantage of it? Okay, so I'm going to structure it in a, you know, of a few topics. And yes, it was introduced. Uh, I am a fintech chartered accountant. I call myself. I specialize in technology as well as finance. And I try to see if any problem is there, can we bring a technology driven solution to solve that? So that is my predominant focus. And that is what I have always loved in the past to do. So with that as a background, let's quickly head into the main screen or you know try to get some perspective. Of course, a general disclaimer before I get started. Uh, the views, whatever I'm discussing, my dear friends, is personal. It has nothing to do with that of my organization, Ken and Co. And this is merely, you know, to share and spread the knowledge with all of you, you know. And they, I might be discussing a few apps, few technology. It's merely from an educative perspective. So what is it that I'm going to do with this? Okay, and I'm going to make it very, very simple. I'm looking, going to look into what are the changing times. What exactly is this AI? And how is it impacting accounting and finance? How is it impacting accounting and finance? Because we need to understand the impact on finance as well. Okay, so accounting and finance as a broad bucket, we will try to look at. So the first bucket, my dear friends, is what are these changing times? My dear friends, you would have realized this COVID has become a game changer for all of us. I am not sure how many of them are aware. After this COVID came into picture, everybody's no doubt there is a lot of negativity, a lot of things going on. But one thing which certainly happened with all of them is that their initiative to become digital started increasing. And you will realize that when they started focusing on digital, they started focusing on technology initiatives. It could be your personal life. It could be your family. For that matter, it could even be, you know, the kids who are going to school. All of them have started becoming more and more digitized. Now, this is giving us humongous opportunities. At the same time, there are risks. But see the transition. In fact, there was a question which was jovially asked, you know, whom do you claim as the biggest source or inspiration for you or your organization to become digitized? And the answer was surprisingly COVID. And it was not because of the manager. Now, don't you think so? You within you know, your structure, within the way you're thinking, you are able to see a whole lot of game changes? The answer is yes. So what exactly are these changing times? And before that, let me also bring in certain facts before you. And this is a very, very interesting report. I will just give you about two to three seconds or maybe about five to 10 seconds to go through this at a very, very high level. Okay. And I'll tell you what is the relevance of this. Please go through it. You can see it clearly. There are two columns. One, it says increasing demand. And the other column is decreasing demand and some two interesting information sets they have given you. Just spend a minute or two, you will realize in the decreasing column or in the section, you would note that your name and my name is there. What? I didn't say your name per se. I meant the fact that we as a profession do data entry. We as a profession do accounting, bookkeeping, payroll, audit, and my goodness, so many cases. And let me tell you, my dear friends, that is all going to become irrelevant going forward. You must be wondering, sir, if it becomes irrelevant, then don't you think we as a profession will lose our value? Unfortunately or fortunately, that is the actual answer. And who told us? Is that some authoritative guidance who said that? Yes, there is. 
and that authoritative guidance my dear friends is called future of job reports by the world economic forum i highly recommend you to go through that document which gives you a very 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 interesting perspective of how things are actually changing and my dear friends you will be shocked that this just a few years back okay 2018 or 2000 2018 when they came up with this report they had a whole lot of opportunities in fact it was said that you know the top 10 they did not identify that these are the top 10 jobs which might lose the significance or you know these are the jobs which we may probably tend to miss out they just identified that audit is one of those areas which is diminishing in opportunities but my dear friends today the entire way this is showcased is totally different and that is what is unfortunately the end result and if i take this further and i look into why is this happening Let's see what's going on in and around us, so that we are able to understand things better. And one such thing which I notice, my dear friends, is the way industries have evolved. And when I say the way industries have evolved, my dear friends, you would notice the fact that you know earlier we called it as Industry 1.0. Now, what is this Industry 1.0? There was a concept of steam engine. There was a concept of utilizing the steam power. and maybe a weaving loom you know we saw those sort of industries actually flourish but what happened was a few years later industry 2.0 began mass production assembly line electric energy and you know whole lot of these things and let me remind you this was itself was considered to be a significant shift the assembly line my dear friends let me tell you is a breakthrough analogy So when I use the word break to energy, what am I referring to? It brought in a huge amount of time savings. It brought in a huge amount of cost savings, and this, my dear friends, was a game changer. And let me tell you or remind you that yes, when we were introduced to the concept of assembly line, I'm not sure how many of them are aware. I'm sure you would have realized you would have watched this Charlie Chaplin fancy movie where Charlie Chaplin kept on doing one same thing again and again, and that was exactly what this you know mass production assembly line happened. Instead of moving the material, or rather the material was you know kept at various places, the human beings was moving across. They said, "Why don't I change this entire process? What if?" what if instead of a human being moving let the human being be stagnant wherever he is and from there we will perhaps move the machine we will perhaps move the components and that is where they brought in a whole lot of this change and my dear friends let me remind you when they brought in this change people were all lined up the machinery or the material used to come to them and they started assembling and that was basically what industry 2.0 did but as though that was not sufficient we had much more things to do there was much more progress and what was that progress and that is where industry 3.0 began the element of the integrated circuit that tiny chip which you see that little one which can do a whole lot of a difference that was possible thanks to this entire thing and when this came in my dear friends it was a breakthrough shift why do i call it as a breakthrough shift it was for a simple reason that a whole lot of these things a whole lot of these features were able to get integrated and computers started becoming smaller and smaller but at the same time what we noticed was that the transaction pace at which the transactions were processing also significantly increased so that gave a perspective or a thought process hey there is a good amount of automation which the computers and the systems can bring in and that is where my dear friends a whole lot of invention actually started we saw the computers entering we saw the computers becoming a very very integral part of the household and thus we see we saw some interesting aspects coming into it but over a point in time this industry 2.0 
as always has to evolve and this today i call it as industry 4.0 and what is this i am talking about devices speaking with each other do you think your smart watch and your mobile phone speak with each other the answer is yes that's why you are the number of steps you have taken is tracked into your mobile phone it can also track your sleeping habit it can tell you how many hours of deep sleep you had it can tell you how many hours of distracted or disturbed sleep you had and so much more how is that possible because machines are getting connected and they're speaking with each other so i am talking about a new era an era where we are seeing some significant progress an era where I, we are seeing a whole lot of newer things coming into picture and an era where things are getting more and more automated my dear friends if you look into this particular slide which i'm going to share now you will realize the fact that hey what you said is right and this is that particular screen what exactly is this industry 4.0 industry 4.0 my dear friends is all about machines let me know if you're able to see my screen otherwise i will share it once again i think my screen was accidentally i hit the stop sharing button let me know if you're able to see my screen let me quickly hit that yeah so what exactly is this industry 4.0 this is all about autonomous you know robots doing tasks we're talking about simulation we're talking about integrated connections applications speaking with each other we're talking about devices connected with one another internet of things we're talking about big data large volumes of data we're talking about augmented reality we're talking about additive manufacturing cloud computing and the list keeps on growing and let me remind you all of this are well protected with cyber security and that my dear friends is this industry 4.0 and this is how the factory of the future in certain companies the factories currently are looking at on the extreme right you are able to understand what are the requirements using various sensors using customer preferences using analytics on the extreme left you are able to understand or you are able to integrate your systems with that of suppliers or a group of suppliers so real time they get alerts you are able to understand as and when there is a manufacturing if there is a default uh, is it because of a material is it because of my issue is it because of a supplier issue and real time alerts are possible and all of this the data is hosted on the cloud where all of them is protected and of course we are using a bunch of these renewable energy resources therefore you are also protecting and you are all gearing up for the future now this my dear friends is what the world is looking like let me give you two examples of transformation so that you get a perspective and this gives you a very very nice view of what exactly is the transformation we are talking about the transformation what started off as a horse cart or what we popularly called as a tonga became a train became an automobile became an aeroplane we had an element of ride sharing recently and today we are talking about autonomous cars of course what is the future nobody knows it let's look into the payment side we are talking about barter we are talking about physical currency fiat money credit card digital payments you know a whole bunch of these technologies we are talking about and what is the future nobody knows and that my dear friends is what is the technology we're talking about the future beholds a whole lot of opportunities for us and let me remind you yes that is what is this exciting times so now that you've got a context or a background what's going on in and around me let's quickly head into the subject what exactly is this ai why is it relevant how is it going to be changing finance audit profession and that's what we're going to look into it and this is today's reality a very very funny statement but that's the way things are uh, you know human beings are actually hooked with this mobile phone device all the time we are into that mobile phone device a software b software communications software you know facebook instagram whatsapp youtube we are just stuck to it but what are machines doing on the other line they are actually learning and what are they learning 
That is what AI is all about. We'll spend a few minutes to get these things better. What exactly is AI? AI in a layman's language is an advanced computer that can simulate a human capability. I repeat, it's an advanced computer that can simulate a human capability. Now, what is it that can it can do? It can get the task, you know, it can ensure that the computers and machines do the task which you and I as a human intelligence would require. A simple example, you know that this road is crowded during this particular point in time, so you avoid going by that. But what if I never knew how that road looks like? So what is it that I do? I in fact prefer asking or requesting somebody else to, hey, you know what, tell me which road is better, they can guide me. But you can't expect every time everybody to be aware of it. And therefore, there is an interesting app. I'm sure most of you know what this app is, the Google Maps. So when you use a Google Maps, it gives you an indicator saying, hey, this is what is going on. This is what the way it is. And my dear friends, this is how you're actually able to navigate. It in fact goes further and says, okay, you know what? There is a trouble in this section or there is a trouble in this road. Why don't you choose an alternative road? And that, my dear friends, is what is the element of intelligence. And I'm sure you'll be wondering that why my Google Maps in the last few days is not very, very accurate. The reason is because the Google Maps depends upon the more the number of people use Google Maps, the faster and the more accurate results it can give you. For instance, if there are three people going on the road, Google Map knows that, hey, you know what, there are three people going on this road or there are three points and based upon the pace at which each of those points or the vehicle or that move, you are actually able to track it. Are you trying to say if 10 people or for that matter, 100 people started Google Maps and started walking from one road to the other road or one end to the other road, they were walking slowly, casually. In reality, the road had no traffic. They were just walking in the footpath. Do you think Google map will start showing the red color? The answer is yes. There was an experiment which was conducted somewhere in Europe where a gentleman loaded all mobile phones with Google map and he had about 100 phones. He put it into one small, you know, a cart sort of a thing, started dragging that cart and walking across the bridge. And what was the result? Within a few seconds, Google map became red in color. And yes, Google indicated there was heavy traffic, redirected all the car company, all the cars and the bikes to move from away from the road. Whereas in reality, not even a single vehicle was actually there. Now, this is how an AI is typically made or typically works. Whether it can be manipulated, the answer is yes. Whether it will be useful, the answer is yes. But it requires data. Now, this is how a traditional system and an AI-based system differ. In the case of a traditional system, you give the data and the program. Your computer gives you the output. Whereas when it comes to AI, the data and output are given to the computer. The computer rejects and it gives you the program, which means I tell the computer what is the input and what is the output, and the computer figures out how to solve that. In other words, the beauty of AI is it decides to write the program on its own instead of we defining what exactly is required. So this is, of course, at a very, very high level to give you a perspective of how the traditional versus the AI system works. Now, this is a very, very interesting chart which talks about the various streams of AI and also indicates how deep or how depth they have progressed. Now, machine learning is the ability of the machine to learn from the data. A simple example, I'm not sure how many of them are aware. Microsoft Excel has inbuilt artificial intelligence and machine learning. And that is possible, my dear friends. The machine is able to understand based upon the data set you have given. And in Excel, it is called as flash fill. So let's take a bank statement which you received from a client, okay? Or you were doing a bank audit and you received this information. You took that information. You spend a lot of time doing text to columns, all of this. Instead, next time, copy paste the entire data into the Excel. Normally, it'll come only in one row or two. 
choose only the concerned rows which have you know date transaction etc go to the extreme right corner fill in only the date and just do control e automatically the date will get copy pasted and that is the beauty of excel in terms of this machine learning and let me tell you my dear friends there are whole lot of these features like this available in microsoft excel there are features which is called as idea which can analyze data on its own and give you some interesting results and that my dear friends is possible and that's where ai is becoming more and more powerful and let me also tell you ai is also becoming more and more affordable and you know we have tools like alexa we have tools like siri which is sort of helping us in a helping out in a genuine manner or you know it's a it's a general applications whereas you have specific applications applications which can go as deep as at analyzing you know the body cells applications which can go as deep as analyzing the human body the temperature the impact you know whole lot of these things the second bucket is nlp natural language processing in simple language it is nothing but understanding the text what i'm speaking i'm not sure how many of them have used this feature in microsoft word and this feature is called the dictation and let me see if i can quickly you know share my screen to show you this image on microsoft word on how the simple application works okay so you are seeing my screen with a microsoft word on it okay and this my dear friends is a simple screen where you know i've just opened ms word and you are able to see this entire you know the screen share out here now what exactly is going on here okay uh, i hope you are able to see my screen otherwise organizers may have to push my screen on to the slide it may take a minute or two so please excuse for that because i wanted to show you something live than just speaking on theory yeah are the organizers here can you please push the screen on to the live window perfect so now that you can see a word screen out here okay an ms word now let me see a simple thing now this is what is called natural language processing there is a feature called dictate and i'm going to tell you something which the word ms word will type as it is hello folks you are listening to a webinar on artificial intelligence enter there you go now you would have realized my dear friends that from here to here when i told it very very simple clearly the system was able to understand on its own and this is exactly what is called as a natural language processing nlp but what it will happen is sometimes it will also capture that fields which i do not want it for example it also captured enter hey can you go no i did not want this but those few features are actually common and that my dear friends is typically how there could be an impact as such likewise the excel which i showed you a few minutes back which i told you you know in terms of how to extract etc those are also powerful features which ai can bring in now let me quickly come back to the presentation which i was showing you and let me quickly push the presentation on to the front screen just give me a minute i just have to navigate it perfect can i request the yeah you will see the presentation back and here we spoke about or we understood what exactly is machine learning we also understood what exactly is nlp natural language processing speech recognition also we spoke about you know translation classification clustering you know speech to text all of these are in another set of buckets then we also have what is called as computer vision the ability of the system to understand something i'm not sure how many of them are aware if you look into the latest version of microsoft i'm using microsoft as a simple example because we have all been using it if you click on any of the image 
you know, or copy any image, any image what you feel. You know, just take a, you know, some beach or some a person or your own photo, let's say with a tie or with a cap or something, you copy that and push it into Word or Excel. Okay, within a few seconds, you will get an update or it will just say that, you know, what exactly the screen is all about. It sometimes gives us Alt E or Control E. It gives you a description of what exactly that slide or that screen is. And how is that possible? It is because there is a visualization of that image. Forget about that. Let me make it even more simple. In your own mobile phone, when you're using Google Photos, you have methods where you can search a photo based on a particular background or theme. Give me all photos with a background of, let's say, a water. It is able to search and give it to you. How is that possible? This is basically called as computer vision. The ability of the computer to vision and visualize what exactly it is. And not just that, my dear friends. Today, this is the technology which is being used in these cars, which are, you know, self-driven, automated, etc., etc. Taking this discussion further, how is this translation actually moving into it? AI is a very, very large bucket. Okay, when there is no artificial intelligence, you bring in an artificial intelligence, you bring in an element of machine learning, and then you have deep learning. Now, when you have just basic data. Let's say a simple Excel or a balance sheet or a you know a bank statement. There is no intelligence applied. When I say intelligence, I'm talking about artificial intelligence. Maximum you might format it. You might use a macro. So there is not much of you know element of AI into it. Of course, you might use something called as a, a you know robotic process automation to a limited extent. Whereas when you go take this thing further, your AI is actually where this is the stage. Cognitive processing, which means the ability of the machine to think on its own. A simple example, you are processing an OCR, optical character recognition, a simple scanned invoice, and you expect the machine to read and understand what is there in that invoice. This is AI, cognitive the ability of the machine to think. Now, let's take an example. In that machine, it read SRO, NRO number or a WRO number, depending on wherever you are. As a student, you'd, I'm sure all of you had this. Many of us were confused whether that NRO followed by is a zero or a O once again. Now, this is where AI will also have a challenge. Unless AI is being trained, hey, first three digits is always NRO, SRO, etc. The balance always is number. It is where the machine starts thinking. Right? Now, this, if it goes to the next level where you're bringing in machine learning, you're bringing in predictive analytics, you're bringing in an analytics saying what can probably happen, what could probably go wrong, what is the trend, what is the algorithm, that is where AI including machine learning comes into picture. And then, of course, you have deep learning. Deep learning are basically algorithms used for large, complicated neural networks, computer vision, cognitive technologies. Now, all of these, my dear friends, are where deep learning abilities are actually coming into picture. So, what are these types of AI? You can categorize them. These are just a few examples. These are not authoritative guidance, but these are just examples based on how people can actually see and understand. Let's take a few examples to get this perspective right. You can have AI based on capability. A capability could be it has ability to do only certain limited things, or maybe it can do a whole lot of these things which are possible. That's based on capabilities. Second is weak AI or narrow AI. AI which is working only on a specific purpose or which can do a whole lot of these things, correct? A simple example could be, uh, you know, AI could just do a few simple tasks, you know, hey, call up this person, hey, send a message. Beyond that, it will not do anything else. Now, if you want your AI or Siri to open WhatsApp, check for this image, upload it there, send it, and send with a, you know, you know, symbol or an emoticon, it's not capable enough of doing because it is still a weaker AI or a narrow AI. There could be a general AI or there could be a super specific AI where it can go depth and do it. Based on functionalities, also you have classifications. Reactive machines, those are something which react after something went wrong. It's more like a detective control. Something went wrong, it can sort of identify and tell this happened. 
limited memory an example could be like that of a, your car a car when it is driving it has a limited memory only to the extent of the journey beyond that after that it forgets it correct it may be saving in somewhere else in the cloud but the ai will not remember it permanently theory of mind self awareness these are advanced ais which is maybe science fiction or superficial we do not know but that those are general classifications which popularly people discuss now what are the ai platforms available we have a bunch of them okay ibm has a wonderful platform called as watson the beauty of this ibm watson platform is that it has the capability okay to do a whole lot of these things and this is available as a sort of a evaluation mode in case you are interested you can just visit the ibm website and sort of pick it up and see how you can train that watson and it is believed that the ibm watson was able to solve us cold cases almost to the extent of 85 or rather 95 to 98% accuracy now that is really interesting statistics this would mean that in future people will not go to you know the lawyers or attorneys or arbitrators rather will go to ibm watson and say hey these are my facts why don't you solve this for me google deep mind and tensor flow is one such other example which is capable of doing it microsoft microsoft has what is called cognitive services amazon has got aws ai and facebook has got learnerflow i'm sure most of us would have come across this situation of what is called as a chatbot you place it an order in swiggy or zomato or any delivery app and you want to track it and you want to con converse with the customer care and you are sending a message and there is an immediate response which comes from the customer care and it looks like it does not actually send by a human being that is because it is a chatting robot a chatting robot predominantly sees your request and tries to identify keywords from those keywords it gives you certain select responses of course a chat robot is a restricted ai if you ask me because beyond the chatting beyond the conversation what you're having it may not have intelligence to solve that puzzle or the larger problem so in case you have a known problem and it knows the solution it can help you out unknown problem unknown solution i don't think this will actually help you out and not to forget ai and speech recognition i think we spoke about this i showed you a live demo as well where ai is actually being used and how this is actually being you know bringing a new ball game of opportunities and features as such so that my dear friends is you know a high level perspective of what ai is and what ai can do i hope you're enjoying the session so far and you've got a thought process saying that hey yes this is where you know ai is actually heading but then comes a very next question is there advantage or disadvantage of this ai what are the things which i can do what are the things which i cannot do using ai and that is where my dear friends this interesting thing comes in it can help you to reduce error to a large extent error reduction because manual process especially those tasks which are repetitive we generally tend to make mistakes whereas ai can do with higher level of you know accuracy i'm not sure if you are aware uh, you know robotics is one stream which is already being used in the medical profession we are talking about robotic arms which are able to do the operation whereas when you combine <coughs> when you combine ai and robotics it can give you a newer set of opportunities second difficult exploration whatever you find as a normal course of business difficult to explore ai can probably help you to identify that you can use them in your daily applications digital assistants repetitive jobs and most important it will not take a break it can work 24/7 for you on the other end the cost is one of the biggest or the biggest disruption or so rather not the disruption i would use the word biggest disadvantage correct because of this high cost it is not practically possible you know to sort of use in every scenario but yes very soon in future we would be having affordable you know ai which is coming into place and 
it cannot replicate humans 100%. Your human being is still required because not every job is 100% automated. It does not, you know, you cannot improvise your experience. Your experience with an AI, you may not probably, you may, you may find it okay, but you may not find it so very satisfactory. Imagine you went to a restaurant and a robot came and served. Once or twice, it'll probably, you know, uh, uh, you'll find it exciting. But after that, you find it too boring. It's like, okay, robot, bring your manager. I don't like you. Correct. And let me also remind you, there is no, there is no, uh, what do you call, uh, creativity as such. Creativity is curtailed. That is a big challenge when it comes to AI. And who knows, it could be a huge repercussion. Unemployment could increase significantly. So those, my dear friends, are few advantages and disadvantages of AI. Yes. So now that we have got a, some amount of thought process in terms of what is exactly advantages and disadvantages, let's quickly head into where do you think in finance or why do you think AI is being used in a practical world today? So let's look into a few services in fraud detection. So where can it be used? It can be used to protect the clients against fraudulent activity, suspect suspicious or to identify fraudulent patterns. An example could be a cash is withdrawn in an ATM in India, let's say somewhere in Gujarat, somewhere in Delhi, somewhere in Chennai, Bangalore, whatever may be the place. And within a few minutes, within a few minutes, let's say five minutes, 10 minutes, 200 to 300 kilometers elsewhere, they are withdrawing using another ATM card of the same person or you know, some feature. Now the ATM machine, if it is deployed AI, it should question, hey, you know what, this is okay, but how can one person travel 100 kilometers in a span of 10 hours and withdraw money? Sorry, you know, span of 10 minutes and withdraw money, it may not be particularly possible, correct? It may be because the card has been spoofed which means it is a fraud, it can actually detect it. Second, risk management. The traditional risk management software applications, they rely only on static or, you know, static information from applicants, financial reports, etc. But AI, what it can do, it can also identify market trends. It can also identify newer news items. For example, you know, that gentleman presented that he was working in so-and-so industry and he gave a very profitable balance sheet for a bank loan. But once you put it into your AI engine, your AI engine can compare the market estimates and say, hey, you know what? Even though this gentleman is saying that this profit percentage is this, all his peers have reported a profit not beyond this particular number. And therefore, it is a matter of question mark. And that, my dear friends, could be where, you know, AI can actually be a huge time saver as well as a game changer. Investment predictions, you know, hedge funds, they have actually started moving away from these traditional methods and they've started adopting machine learning algorithms. I'm not sure how many of them are aware. Many fund managers are using machine learning to identify when to invest, when to take back the money. There are a whole lot of these and these applications are also available for you and I as users against a small premium. Correct? Let's open to the customer service. Many a times poor customer service, a lot of complaints, Accurate information, you know, it actually gives some sort of a trouble out there. <coughs> what AI can do, machine learning chatbots can sort of identify the behavior of each customer. I'm sure there are some customers who are very, very patient, some customers who are impatient who want to be done right away, and some customers who are extremely hard to handle because their expectations keep on increasing. And this is where the sort of technologies can be leveraged so that you can handle each one of them in their own style. The next techno area where you can probably consider is digital assistance. When I use the word digital assistance, I'm referring to, you know, machine learning, trying to help you out in terms of, you know, performing your job much better. It could be regular reminders. It could be regular alerts, you know, tools such as Google, uh, Apple, Microsoft, all of them have their own sort of a simple AI software, which can be used. Marketing, the ability to make predictions based on a past behavior. Whereas you can use this for marketing, mobile usage, web activity, response to ad campaign, and a whole lot of these <coughs> things. 
you would also realize my dear friends that you know whenever we uh, you have searched something in any of the e-commerce websites next one or two days that product you will find everywhere wherever you see an advertisement why because this is all called as targeted marketing thanks to ai based technology and last but not the least algorithmic trading algorithmic trading is basically you know where you identify the seller and buyer who is actually looking for the same price and try to connect them automating of trading entire process from end to end and this is possible using a ai, uh, AI based system where automatically can buy and sell a particular quantity of stock when the price reaches a specific level you can build in that sort of an intelligence in fact this is exactly what renaissance medallion fund in the us did they are a bunch of mathematicians who actually operate this entire fund and it has always given them positive returns i will not say extraordinary returns but it has always given them positive returns your process automation your client documentation your back office your client face facing information all of these my dear friends the machine learning algorithms can review read interpret and analyze and say hey you know what this is what is my problem or this is what is the client's issue so that exactly is where to what extent it's actually going let me tell you also one of these companies you know which is actually coming up with a solution or you know i just happened to read let's say assuming you get a notice from the income tax or the gst or professional tax etc imagine if a machine was able to scan through that notice and tell you what exactly is the problem and how do you probably want to solve that now that is what machine learning is all about so these are a few cases jp morgan came up with what is called as a coin now what this app can do or this ai system can do is that it can review multiple contract documents <coughs> which takes hours together and in a click of a button or a minute you are able to get the output very very quickly wells fargo is another ai uh, company which is used ai based chatbot and that too with the help of facebook messenger to communicate with users and you know in many of the security financial service companies such as including icic bank etc they using these ais to train and see how best the outcome can actually be analyzed so let's look into one specific industry ai and money laundering in banking industry because this is something very very huge <clears throat> now when i talk about ai in banking and money laundering what am i referring to let's take a simple example you know the moment if i have to market or look into one of the customers account typically what happens a customers account there is a salary which is created there are a few payments emis and by end of 3 to 4 days the salary or the amount comes to negligible amount. this is a typical pattern of any persons bank account now if i take a ratio analysis first of the month i got salary eighth of the month all my expenses went so first of the month it was showing the highest balance and the eighth of the month it is showing the least balance and the delta between that and this let's say is gone down by 200 or 500 percent now i had some 50000 rupees and it has gone down or has become 5000 rupees there has been so much of a delta now if you say every customer who's lost out 450% or you know 45% or whatever is the math when you work out the possible you know argument is like it is very shocking you would say hey you know what i need to investigate but as in reality that's a normal pattern so the traditional systems of and you know giving alerts in a bank today are all based upon these sort of features and that is where it is becoming challenging on the other end what the system such as ai based system can do is that it can identify an alert based upon the consumer's behavior in each and every particular scenario and that's the beauty of it and there are number of variables which it can consider you know to see whether transaction or risk of transaction is suspicious multiple credits in the account other than salary whether what is the ratio of cash transaction is to non cash what is the ratio of NFT, RTGS, are there very very limited accounts where payments are going? Is there a burst 
in withdrawal burst in deposit or you know there are frequent withdrawals or an amount unusual transactions happening or the transactions of too high or too low value and whole lot of these things are possible and that's a pattern recognition for you you know just to give an example if you typically do a querying system in a salary account and this is typically how it will be it can go as high as 50000 and it can come down as limit as 5000 and if you said hey you know what all cases where the balances is more than or the moment is more than 100% 200% or more than a huge percentage you report whereas in this case it may be a false positive correct so if the previous balance if the closing balance is greater than the previous day balance by 500% it is a burst and a suspicious which is 45000 divided by 5000 into 100 this is close to about 900% but in reality, this is a false positive. Why? Because this is a regular pattern of my bank or my operation. And what is it that the AI-based system can do? This is a beautiful image which gives you a perspective. On the extreme left, you have the defined the rules. What exactly is going on? All the transactions are go through these roll engines and it identifies which of those transactions are normal, which of those transactions are abnormal, as you can see out here. When I identify which are those transactions which are normal and abnormal, my dear friends, you get a clarity or you get a system saying, hey, you know what, these abnormal items should be flagged. And alerts developed, investigation takes place, sometimes a case has to be booked or sometimes you have to deal, deal a particular scenario in depth. Some of the times you can just probably ignore because it is too small a transaction. And that, my dear friends, is typically how this entire system works. Let's take this quickly further. This could be a classical example. This is a live case, okay? Whereas there is an account number of some XYZ person where there are continuously 49,000, 49,000 deposits which have happened sequentially throughout the particular financial, uh, to, throughout a particular day. And if you notice very carefully, all the deposits, my dear friends, have happened on the same day only. So it's happened on 12, 13, 14, 16. And the, most of these amounts are 49,000 and multiples thereof. And if you look into the top debits or withdrawals, these are very, very strange. And the branch is, this person is depositing cash in one place and he's actually drawing in another place. And all withdrawals are in the form of demand draft. Now, this could be a suspicious pattern. Correct. And the second example could be similar pattern was noted in few other accounts where there's a cash deposit, there's a transfer, cash deposit, transfer, cash deposit, transfer. Now, these are all examples of how things can actually be suspicious. Now, let's take this another example, geospatial analysis. The geospatial analysis are basically cases where Within a short span of time, a person is withdrawing funds from various locations. If you notice over here, one person is withdrawn from you know location A, which is Bangalore, and look at the time zone, which is about 17, 24 in all the three cases. But at the same time, it is withdrawn from multiple bank accounts using a single, uh, you know, all of them through an ATM. This may actually be suspicious. And let's not forget. You know, there can also be cases where withdrawals at two different cities in a span of 12 minutes. Those are the cases which I showed you. To. Now, these are all cases or patterns which you can probably identify. And not just that, you can also identify phishing attacks. And how does a phishing attack? And those of you who are not who are aware what a phishing attack is, it's basically an attack to gather your financial information. And typically in a phishing attack, what happens is they gather what your username and password is. Immediately after that, they add a particular beneficiary. The moment that they add that particular beneficiary, they, of course, immediately transfer. So they, the typical pattern is, you know, obtain the customer URL password, change the customer, you know, mobile number and email. Within five minutes, add a new beneficiary. The moment beneficiary is added within that, you know, probably let's say two hours, three hours, it gets activated, transfer at least about 90% of the balance to the beneficiary, and it's all over. Now, if you use an AI-based system which can analyze each of these transactions, you will be alerted much beforehand. Let's also look into another interesting bucket, how AI and analytics are going hand in glove. And here in analytics, you need to understand the four broad types of analytics. Pres descriptive, prescriptive, predictive, cognitive. 
Descriptive is basically to say ye kya hua, what happened in the past. Prescriptive is to say how to make it happen. Ye kya karne hoga or kya karna hoga. Correct? So more on that particular side. And the predictive is ye kya ho sakta. Correct? What could possibly go wrong? And cognitive is using machinery. Correct? Even though I put it across in a jovial pattern, I hope you got this context. So descriptive is more to do with the past. Prescriptive is how do I make things better. Predictive is how do I identify the pattern. And cognitive is how do I use machines and robots to analyze it. And these are a few examples. You know, a typical situation where, you know, you need to categorize new inputs as one set of categories. An example could be you've put in an image, which is to categorize dog or cat. So that is classification problem. Next comes the problem of continuous estimation. Estimate the numerical or the value in a sequence. It could be predictive. It could be more of forecasting. Or it could be clustering, where individual data have formed a set of common characteristics. For example, this is the average time he withdraws money. This is the average time or this is the average amount he always siphons off from each account. So it's more segmenting of your customers. Then you have what is called as anomaly detection, where you can identify certain exceptions fraud detection, money laundering, etc. Or system that provides, you know, uh, recommendations based on certain given inputs. Okay, if you treat this, probably it may actually be better. So it gives you some sort of a recommendation. A classical example could be when you do a shopping online, it says people who bought this phone also bought the following. So it gives you more that sort of a recommendation so that it is able to drive. Then comes a very, very interesting bucket. What are the opportunities and what are the challenges for me as a professional? Because let me remind you, this is a very, very interesting bucket. And when we need to understand this much in detail, we need to get a perspective saying, hey, if I, you know, if I just know the features is not sufficient, because I should also be aware of what it can do for me. And that is where, my dear friends, we need to understand of the various opportunities and challenges. Okay, let's quickly spend some time. What are the opportunities? Financial institutions in the future can take full advantage of AI and they can add this as a huge new line of business. It is going to bring a lot of change to their value chain. And AI with the opportunity, you know, what it is able to bring in, it is bringing a whole lot of new things. It's going to be leaner, meaning less cost, extremely fast. It's going to be customized to give products and services. And it's going to be ubiquitous presence. That means universally present. And at the same time, smart decision making is going to be possible. And newer value propositions and newer business problems AI can possibly solve. On the other end, there are also some challenges. Data. This is the single biggest and the largest challenge. Institutions today struggle to manage the large quantities of data. They have so much of data. How do I manage all of this? And how do I train them? In certain cases, the data is not in a formatted content at all. So where is the question of you training the AI? So it all becomes a problem. Next comes operations. Many valuable applications of AI require complicated operations which typically currently the human being is doing and therefore translating that into the machine is going to take some amount of time. Next, do I have the requirement, do I have the required engineers, do I have the required number of people who understands finance, who understands technology and who is able to build that and that's very important, the talent portion of it and not to forget the regulatory environment. When you use the word regulatory environment, is the law or the legal system sort of agree for you using AI? Is that, you know, acceptable? Are there challenges in terms of how the AI should be used? And probably one can refer the Niti IO document on AI and the way forward. There are also a couple of policies which state governments have given. For example, state government of Tamil Nadu has given a policy on AI. These are all interesting reads for you to get some idea. Now comes a very important thing. What is the impact on our profession? How do I consider the accounting and auditing element of it? What is it that I have to do? So this is one simple case where, you know, a few examples which you can notice over here, which the big fours are currently using. You know, B BDO has sort of, you know, done a pilot of BDO Lexi 
translation app which can use this neural network to manage information in multiple languages it can do the entire translation in a you know by going through information Deloitte has another AI which can be focused on AI services. EY has, you know, software which can sort of, you know, do predictive analytics. KPMG has launched a toolkit called Ignite and is working with IBM. PwC has invested in data platforms. You know, a whole lot of these things are there. Of course, they have the money part. They have the larger institution. But we as an organization also have to start thinking on whether we can use these technologies which are publicly available which you have to just pay a small amount of premium and subscribe to it, can we get started by using them? So why do you think AI can actually impact us on audit? The entire risk assessment phase it can impact. Why? Earlier, risk assessment was done specific to a particular scenario or a circumstance. Today, you can do the entire risk assessment from the first to the last thanks to AI. And it can do such amount or such amount of accuracy, you will not realize that fact that you know it can give you even 100% audit it can help you to provide advice and insights into successful implementation it can sort of give you an assurance of management whether the management can take the risks it can be as an effective risk mitigation control it can do some fraud investigation and you know a bunch of these things are actually possible why do you think it can be used exclusively in fraud investigation? You can use it for data mining. You dig more and more about your data to identify patterns. It can be used as an expert system. When I use the word expert system, I'm referring to a system where you have, you know, a person whom you can rely upon. He has a lot of information and, you know, he can deal with unstructured decision-making problems as well. Machine learning, pattern recognition, neural network, and whole of these things as well, you can probably use you know, AI when it comes to fraud management. So are there AI-powered fintechs companies in the world? The answer is yes. And this is an example of few of them. Data Robot is one such AI-powered fintech company who does some sort of analysis and identifies what frauds could have possibly incurred. You have the Kensho Ayasdi who does that you know, who uses AI in risk management. Then you have the Alpha Sense, which sort of does your investor predictions. You have the Casito, which does customer service. You have Coverfox, which is the Indian company, which is using AI in insurance. Lending card, Flexi Loans, again, they're using in lending. Algorithmic training uses this. Process automation you can use for RPA purposes, etc. You have used for various anti-money laundering cases. You know, a bunch of this, my dear friends, this list just keeps on increasing. And all of these, my dear friends, are all innovative solutions in this challenging world and challenging times. So are there any AI-enabled tools for CA? So these are a few examples, which is that BotKeeper, which can automate bookkeeping. Uh, your uh, Smack, which can automate your finance department. Wick, which is another platform for accounting productivity. These are all international. In India, we have one company called Zoho, Z-O-H-O. They also used AI-based systems, AI-based engines. And they have something called as a Z-I-A, Zoho Intelligent Assist. So as and when you type your requirement, it gives you those reports. So highly recommended, just go visit their website. You will get some, some good ideas and insights. Now, these are AI-enabled contract management solutions. Uh, eBrivia, Luminance, you know, uh, Lawyers, uh, uh, Law Geeks. These are all applications which can review complicated contracts, boring contracts, and give you the gist in a span of few minutes. And of course, they have to analyze the contract and they all sort of, you know, have the machine learning algorithm, but that's typically what is different. So you can imagine how our life is going to change when these technologies are going to come in and there's going to be a whole lot of way change in the way we are going to deliver the professional service. And this is one other app which is called as mindbridge.ai. They use data, they use analytics combined with the power of AI so that you are actually able to solve the world larger issues and these are typically helpful for auditors of course it's a us based company but they have predominant way in which you can do risk assessment and they have some interesting insights about it and this is a classical case how ai is being used or advanced technologies have been used including ai for mitigating covid so you can see over there where in the left hand side or the top corner, you can actually see how, you know, AI is being used to recognize the person's 
behavior phase and you know the blue or red could be whether that person was uh, you know contact tracing whether that person was infected or he had infected somebody else or somebody else had infected him all those things possible cases it can highlight and you know a lot of bunch of these things was possible right hand side extreme bottom bottom corner you also find uh, ai based uh, robot uh, ro uh, robots of course they can sort of you know go to each of these rooms and uh, in a hotel and sort of filter or clean up the air and you know a whole lot of these things are possible and the left hand side top bot uh, bottom corner you see uh, a soldier navigating uh, drones again they sort of use ai to understand what exactly is the person behavior you know a bunch of these things my dear friends are possible so what is this ai going to bring for you and i it is going to give us an opportunity to automate an opportunity to de-skill time consuming and repetitive tasks at the same time it can minimize the burden and maximize the benefit to the organization when it is able to do these things my dear friends it is going to be obviously a game changer and see is we all have a huge domain knowledge and experience in the current financial profession why don't we lend some time to our technology folks and try to combine develop a product as such and when you do that the results could be marvelous it could be for a small purpose it could be for your own office it could be for a community as a whole but yes it could be something beneficial and cs should closely work with ai programmers only for this reason because you can understand pattern or rather they can use our expertise and to understand the pattern behavior what is you know fraud based what can be a red flag what is something which you should probably not bother about it etc and once we are able to do this we should be in a position to define these patterns and behaviors in real time so that as and when the transaction happens you are notified you are given an alert remember the cf of the future will have to understand technology as much as he understands finance so that brings me to the end of what i wanted to cover i wanted to keep it crisp i want to keep it very precise because ai is a very very advanced area but it can definitely give you a lot more thoughts and insights on where we stand and how we can do a whole lot of a big difference over to the organizers i hope you got a lot of informative content and i hope i was able to enlighten your minds saying that what exactly is ai where do we see this ai coming into and how this can be a game changer thank you over to you thank you very much thank you very much for your detailed discussion and really we are really enjoying that so there is one question uh, i'll show the same on the screen when we do an image search of ai do you think it's the correct representation of ai uh triveji ji that's a right perspective one example i think that's right uh, let's take an example um you are searching um uh, let's say an umbrella or a bottle which you noticed okay and you are trying to go to google and you give that image now based on that pattern is where google flipkart amazon is able to identify that and gives you similar attributes you're absolutely right that's a perfect case of ai being used so that's it so nothing uh, any special question uh thanking once again sir and requesting thank you so much and requesting in future also that sure. please allow us and spend some time for educating in casa both sure thank you so thank much you. take care thank everybody bye bye all the best bye, bye.